Hey everybody, welcome to Sew with Joe. Today we're picking up where we left off last time. Sewing this uh, stopping doesn't get you anywhere onto the uh, butt of my 20 plus year old jeans. We're already started into it, so we're gonna uh, just keep going. Let's continue on with it. Exciting news today! I've uh, reached a, an advanced, advanced thimbleism state. <clears throat> my uh, my lovely wife picked up a uh, leather thimble for me. The brand is Clover. Let's see how this fits. Nice little clover design on there. Boop. Perfect. All right. Got a new face. New face of so with Joe. A clover thimble. Clover leather thimble. Oh yeah, that's awesome. That's our symbology, symbolism for, the, for today. That's awesome. And it moves a little bit. It's going to take the shape of my finger over time. Yeah, <clears throat> I like it. So for today's good news, we're going to have uh, just some time for some reflection on the last few episodes. Um, every once in a while it's good to just look back on the things that you've talked about in, in the past and just reflect. And for me, if I, don't, uh, if I don't do something more than once, I don't remember it. So, we'll go back to a few episodes ago when we were talking about building a better ice cube. Basically, they're using a gelatin compound that's mostly water instead of using ice. When you freeze this gelatin compound, it doesn't melt, uh, you can reuse it. Um, the we, there's no uh, wastewater. Uh, you use a lot less water. Great idea. There's so many things coming down the pipe. Is it coming down the pipe or coming down the pike? Is it is it a, a hose or a road we're talking about here? Coming down the turnpike or coming down the pipe, as in like down the, I, you know, it's one of those things. I want to make sure I'm saying it right. I say pipe, so that makes more sense to me, I guess. You know what? I'm going to end this off and do the last few stitches with a new thread just because I don't want to get it to the point that I can't tie it. So when your thread gets too short you can't really tie it anymore. <clears throat> I'm sorry for the um, the dry mouth this morning. It's, um, it's got some 
early morning thing going on. Oh yeah, and we're out of white thread. I forgot that. We ran out of white thread last time. So, you. I am going to put a spot of yellow in there just because I already have some on a different needle. It's my old needle. If you remember this one when I bent, bent that up nicely. All right, let's see if we can get a last stitch or two in on this side. Uh, other good news that we talked about recently was uh, in the UK they are upcycling the electronics. People that are upgrading their uh, their electronics can donate and people come around and pick them up and they are refurbished cleaned up made sure they work um, and are given away to those in need so people who can't afford to go out and buy a desk lamp so that their kid can study at night now they can get a desk lamp from these people and the kid might have a chance in school it's an extreme example but it's the way it is sometimes sorry for the paper sounds Just flipping through my old notes here um, <clears throat> we talked about American Airlines coming out with a new jet fuel That is uh, basically made from byproducts or corn, corn waste, I guess, the stalks and cobs. Stuff that would usually either be fed to pigs or used as fertilizer or gotten rid of. They're now being turned into jet fuel. And the good thing about this jet fuel, well, two good things, is that one, it's compatible with all current systems, so you don't have to modify any anything, any infrastructure. And um, it's also 50% fewer emissions, so not only are you uh, not consuming fossil fu fuels, which are non-renewable, you are um, reducing the, uh, the emissions coming out. So, win-win. You win one. If anybody catches the win win reference, that's um, from, oops, sorry, bump your world there. It's from uh, F is for Family, a cartoon series that Bill Burr and Vince Vaughn are involved in. That's such a good series. Maybe not good as in like wholesome, but funny. Really, really, really funny. Um, and yeah, in, in there, there's a, an Oriental woman named Win Win. And that's where, uh, that's where my mind goes whenever I hear a Win Win situation. It sounds like a Win Win to me, eh, Win Win? And the guy's name was Chet. Turns out Chet is the word in her language for death. <laughs> uh, yeah, it just it's a, it's a really interesting show. It's like dysfunctional families in the seventies, or probably normal families in the seventies. Pretty much everybody was dysfunctional back then, by our definition. So, stopping doesn't get you anywhere patch, is all done. That's what she looks like from the inside, covering up that hole. Awesome. I think I'm just gonna look over these jeans, see if there's anything else that needs to be tacked on, any little little things. And we'll do that. <laughs> American company leather piece is coming off. 
Does American Company even exist anymore? Do you guys know? I should be sending these videos. <laughs> I think I'm going to take this belt, this one belt loop, and, and uh, sew it a little bit heavier there. Grab some of that red thread we were playing with. Got a huge bobbin of it. So. Ah. I thought I had it. <clears throat> I'm really glad I have these bifocals. As difficult as this is, it would be a lot tougher if I didn't have them. Um, I never thought that I would like or want to go with bifocals. It just kept happening that I was using my... Um, my reading glasses so much that uh, it was just a massive pain. I had like half a dozen pair of reading glasses scattered throughout the world and um, when you finally do get bifocals and get used to them it's pretty awesome. Do you, if you do have glasses, do you wear bifocals or progressives? What do you prefer? What Have you had both? What's the difference? Let me know. I've never done progressives, so I don't know what that's like. So yeah, for, uh, for these, I just kind of Try and put down a lot of stitches. Throw a lot of thread at it, keep it tight. Reflecting back on more good news we've talked about. Um, also in the new in the UK, they're using uh, two uh, natural invasive species uh, in order to make concrete. Um, so there's a crayfish that invades their rivers and wrecks their waterways and uh, those are collected and uh, normally the shells have to be disposed of or the bodies have to be disposed of and uh, now the shells are being crushed and used instead of sand in concrete and there's also a type of weed that's very invasive over there and apparently destroys uh, concrete. It's called Japanese knotweed. And um, yeah, apparently does terrible things to, to the infrastructure, so they get rid of that and incinerate it. And the ash from the, knot, the knotweed is used in concrete as well. So you have two things that would otherwise have to be collected, bagged, and disposed of. Now they're well, probably being collected, bagged, and, and then used. Uh, but at least they're being used. And uh, the other benefit to that, aside from not having all this waste going into the uh, landfills and everything, going, can go into the roads. Um, the other thing with that is that the... Um, sand doesn't have to be removed from the earth and that saves a lot of energy.
is mining. I never, I hadn't thought of sand mining as mining before because I live amongst gravel pits. Um, or near to gravel pits. And, uh, you know, it's just, doesn't really seem like a mining operation, but I guess it is. Um, just never really looked at it that way. And so that prevents a lot of diesel fuel from being used for the mining, prevents the earth from being dug up. All that good stuff. Oh, and it saves on uh, the carbon uh, emissions. Uh, point six tons of CO2 per ton of normal concrete, and that's dropped quite significantly with this other type of concrete. Like I say, without the diesel emissions and all that. <clears throat> so that's pretty awesome, dude. Okay, I think that'll be more secure now. In case you haven't seen the multiple belt loops yet and you're wondering what the heck I just I like having lots of belt loops in the back I don't like having that like dip and then have this being grabbed and pulled up and then the dip you know usually it's like you have a long distance between belt loops and I don't really like that so I make my own well, I shouldn't say I make my own. I take uh, belt loops off of other uh, projects and I sew them on. I guess I could easily make the belt loops, but I've always been one to just transplant things. To me, it just saves time because then I don't have to like cut them out. I guess if you're seam ripping them out and everything, then yeah, that takes time. Looks like we might have to replace this one soon. That's the other thing. Then when when you do when you do have old uh, clothes like this, then when one part does rip, then at least you have you know, four more right beside it to take up the slack. again here. Okay, let's see what else we can find. What I usually do is I'll, I'll pick these up and I'll um, look inside them and just see where the light is coming through. Right now I can see light down here. not through yet. See light here. Oh, and here. Okay, so this is going to have to get done soon, probably. I think that's okay to wear for now. This little hole is opening up again. I think I'll throw a few more stitches in here. This is pretty, pretty loosely stitched. So I'll do that. Just kind of wanted to get to uh, where I could wear these by the end of this episode. Reflecting back on more good news. <clears throat> uh, there is uh, there's been clinical trials on a potential cure for MS. Um, 
three test subjects were um, had the procedure and all three greatly improved. And when treatment was stopped, then their symptoms came back. So pretty definitive uh, evidence that there could be a real treatment for ALS. This is my wife, Sarah. For those of you who don't know, uh, she brings me a decaf coffee and a half a cookie every morning. see a little bit of sun coming in through, or a little light coming in through there. So I figure better tighten this one up. Sometimes the stitches will come a little loose over time and just have to revisit an area or two. And that's why it's important to give them a little tug in between, make sure everything is nice and tight. And if you don't know who the headstones are, um, check them out. They're a um, really awesome Canadian rock band. Rock, maybe leaning towards punk rock, maybe a bit. They're, uh, they've got some really good songs. My favorite's probably Cemetery. good news we had is uh, they've developed technology to break down the radioactive material around places like Chernobyl and uh, oh what was the Japanese one F Fukushima I don't remember exactly the name um, for sites like that they've developed technology which is basically a series of tubes of a specific length that they implant into the ground um, and that 
Something about the spacing between the tubes allows radioactive material to decay faster. faster. I really don't know the technology there. Um, all I know is that after one year, um, radioactivity in the air was down by 37% and radioactive material in the soil was down by 47% in one year. So if they can do that, <clears throat> they should be able to dramatically reduce the um, the radioactive waste and the, the hazard in that area. Who knows, knows maybe those lands can be inhabited once again. You know, all those buildings that were just abandoned so long ago. If you ever get a chance to watch a documentary on, on that, it's really neat to see what uh, those sites look like today. one thing that always intrigues me is um, developed places that no longer are inhabited and uh, seeing how the earth reclaims what we've done to it you know entire skyscrapers big oh I don't know skyscrapers big buildings covered in moss and you know trees growing through them in them um, you know, water just wearing them away. One thing I'd like to do is uh, just go around, you know, within a few hours of here kind of thing and just look for and explore abandoned buildings. Just to see. I just I enjoy seeing things age. Well, let's have another look. We got this a little sturdier here. It's probably going to open up down in here yet. <laughs> you know, wherever there's blue jean material, it's probably going to wear out and I'll probably have to patch. <laughs> Denim gets really, really thin after 20, so 20 some odd years. Uh, so yeah, I think these are ready to, uh, to wear again. Awesome. We had a nice little recap on the last few episodes. Finished up a project next time. Who knows? Maybe it'll be these jeans. Got some stuff falling apart here. Here and there and everywhere. But I also have about another half a dozen or so projects lined up. So no um, no shortage of sewing on, uh, on this channel. And uh, it's all kind of interesting stuff like this. So stay tuned. Thanks very much for joining me. I do, I do really value the time that we get to spend together. Cheers. Until next time, keep chilling. Don't forget your cookie. Peace.